The story of Mohawk iron workers is nothing short of inspiring. Haudenosaunee Mohawk iron workers are the definition of bravery and self-determination. Mohawk iron working began in 1886 when Mohawk people were hired to build the Victoria Bridge for the Canadian Pacific Railroad. They quickly gained a reputation of having no fear of heights. And they also had the most dangerous positions as connectors and riveters. Scaling astonishing heights, erecting and connecting the steel, they were named Skywalkers. These men rarely used harnesses or protective gear. Sadly, their work was not without casualties. In 1907, the Quebec Bridge collapsed, killing 33 Mohawk iron workers. In the 1920s, Mohawk iron workers took their talents to New York City and became the icons of the Industrial Age. These Mohawk men built the Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, Twin Towers, and Rockefeller Center, just to name a few. This is an incredible story. All right, Brakatayahawa. Some elders and apostles of great millstone, which are the men that rule well. The men who taught us his truth, peace, blessings, and salutations, as always, be to the elect. And I wanted to make this quick lesson. Um, you know, especially since we're in that season, man. You know, I'm, you know, we're in that season where uh, in America right now, you know, they're celebrating unknowingly and knowingly celebrating the death of uh, our brothers, man, from the tribe of Gad. And, you know, just wanted to bring out this quick lesson, uh, showing through the spirit, man, who the true Israelites are, man. Just a quick lesson on that itself, because what you just saw uh, was basically uh, men of the northern kingdom, all right, building the treasure cities, all right, uh, which shows who the true Israelites are. Because you ain't going to catch no Edomite building, a, 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 you know, a literal tower, all right, uh, you know, those Amalekites that are in, in our land right now, they, you'll never see them building nothing like that, at least not right now. In the kingdom, they're going to be building our treasure cities. But nonetheless, Romans eight sixteen, man, all right? The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Now, what you just saw right there was proof and evidence, one, one way to prove that we are the children of the Most High, all right? Because what? The scriptures speak about the things that we did, the things that, that pertain to us scripturally, right? Prophecy is one of them, all right? But we, also the history, man. The history bears witness to who we are as well, all right? Now, what you just saw was a video of the Gadites, all right, which uh, pretty much, you know, some of them even died building these treasure cities, you know, and it's spiritual because uh, more specifically, that documentary, it was a snippet. Th those pictures were snippets from another documentary, which was on the History Channel, which a lot of Gadites built, uh, 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 some of, no, not some, a lot of New York City's landmarks, the Chrysler building was done by the Mohawks, uh, the iron workers, I believe that's the name of the company, I think that the actual Native Americans or the actual Gadites that worked there, I don't know if they were actually Mohawk, uh, of the Mohawk tribe or not, all right, but hey man, everything is spiritual, it just goes to show who the true Israelites are, you know, uh, every, and hey man, I'll even go, uh, to say, man, my father is, uh, also an iron worker, he's retired now, but, you know, he was a, a iron worker as well. And he told me the men that were working with him. All right. Because my dad knows uh, that he's an Israelite and things like that. And the main people working with him, he said, were Issachar, Gad and uh, Judah and Benjamin. All right. He said, you don't really see a lot of Edomites there. You know, usually like the foremen and things like that, obviously, you know, the taskmasters. Right. But, you know, it just goes to show who the Israelites are today. Now, real quick, I want to get this before I get into the Exodus. I don't have a lot. I only have a few precepts. Uh, actually, let me get, let me actually get that in Exodus first. But like I said, in, uh, like I read in Romans 8, 16, the spirit of self breath witness that what with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Now, let's read about what we did in uh, ancient times. Exodus 1 and 8. Now, there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Right. Because Joseph, um, you know, if you know the history, he was taken into captivity in Egypt, but then he was set on high and was able to bring. All right. Uh, Jacob and, and the rest of the uh, the rest of his brothers to, to to Egypt to avoid the famine. Right. So it says. Um, and he said unto his people, behold, oh, real quick, because he brought our people into, you know, when we were only. I uh, forgot how many people, how many we were. We weren't really a nation yet, but we were just like, uh, it was just Jacob and his sons, right? And we were brought into Egypt and that's where we grew as a nation, right? 
So Exodus 1 and 9, he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we because we grew into a, a, a big nation. I think we came in 70 souls, I believe it says in the scriptures. It says, Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join unto, also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Right. And right now. All right. They're, they don't really I don't want to say they don't fear us multiplying because they do. But we are multiplying. And what right now also they're not afraid of us joining our with our enemies, man. They just want the, you know, Esau. The difference is Esau wants our blessing. That's why he wants to obliterate us. All right. So it says. Uh, verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Right. Which is what they do now. OK. Obviously, we're not getting whipped no more, but. You still have taskmasters that afflict this even at work. All right. And a lot of times it's a Jake sometimes, you know. So it says, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Now with that documentary, and I'm not going to post the whole documentary. It's too long. And I don't even think I, could, I can't even really find it on YouTube anymore. But um, basically, that's what you you seen. The, the documentary was on, man. That little snippet. All right. Was based on the Gadites, the Reubenites and, and all the other Israelites that built. Uh, the the treasure cities. Where are the treasure? Who's Pharaoh now? Esau. Romans the ninth chapter compares Esau and Pharaoh, right? And I believe even in Joel it compares Esau and Egypt, right? So or Edom and Egypt. I believe it's Esau and Egypt. But nonetheless, what they built, we built treasure cities for Pharaoh back then, right? And we're still we're doing it today as well. You know, we're we're doing a rerun, if you will. This is the second biggest exodus, so it's it's only right. All right, that we suffer the exact same thing over again for prophecy, right? Because what? It's going to be the second greatest deliverance. But what? It says, for they, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses, which these, those were uh, treasure cities back then. That's like, that's like someone saying today, oh, I want to go to New York City. Or, oh, I want to go to, um, you know, I want to go to, uh, uh, what's another, uh, oh, Miami or something like that, right? Well, who built, who built up those treasure cities? The Israelites, right? Same thing today. Who built who built New York City? Gad. All right. Gad, Jad, Gad and Judah. All right. Those are the main people that you have uh, working as as those uh, uh, men that built those treasure cities. All right. And many other things, too. It ain't just the actual building structure, but that that's the spirit. Because what? Back then we were building those pyramids and today we're building the new pyramids for Esau. It says. The more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Now, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, the thing that hath been, it is, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun, right? So uh, that which is then is now, meaning everything reincarnates, everything happens over again. So what do you have happening now? The same way how we were building treasure cities for the Egyptians back then, the, 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 uh, the, the, the Hamites, were building them for Esau today. All right. But what our captivity will be turned over. OK, like the scriptures say uh, when you read Isaiah uh, 14 and 21, man. So, you know, that's all I wanted to bring out. Uh, really, that uh, snippet in the beginning was uh, was probably one of the heaviest points because, you know, it just goes into how, you know, you had Gad. All right. Because uh, I was meditating upon that tribe uh, being its so-called Thanksgiving. Right. And uh, I just, you know, I was just thinking about it, man. It's a spirit, man, that our history shows who we are. All right. And what's going on right now, too, man. All right. Prophecy. All right. We went into captivity and things like that. But soon comes deliverance. Matter of fact. Let me grab that. Isaiah, because what? There's hope. The scriptures say gas shall overcome in the, at the end, right? In the end, gas shall overcome. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land for the Lord, the land of the Lord, Salakia, for servants and handmaids. Right. So that's the that's the right side up of this thing, because right now it's upside down. We're still building treasure cities for Pharaoh because them, them, them structures ain't stopping. You see in the live camp, there's a, there's a pyramid being made right next to us. Not a literal pyramid, but a building, right? Uh, it says, uh, the house of Israel shall possess them in the, in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors, right? And that just goes to show, if we're building cities for somebody else, that means we're captives, all right? We don't even got to go to the book of Baruch. That itself, that documentary itself proves 
that we're captive. Because we're building treasure cities for Pharaoh still. Okay? Uh, they shall rule over their princes, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Right? We're going to get rest for uh, the hell that we caught here, man. And I just want to get this for, for Gad, man. All right? Uh, Genesis chapter 49 and 19 says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, which he was overcome. All right, and we're in that season right now where Gad was overcome. You know, they slaughtered our brothers and sisters, man, and children and the infants and the, the, the sons and daughters. They did that around this time. Yeah, right? So, but what? But he shall overcome at the last, right? And how is, how is Gad going to overcome? All right? The way how we're overcoming right now, which is by way of the, 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 the word. Let me get how Gad's going to overcome. Revelation 12 and 11, and they, I'm going to start up a little bit. Yep. Revelation 12 and 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power and the power of his anointed, or, or Mashiach, or, or Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, right? For, yeah, yeah, I believe he's talking about, uh, yeah, the power of his Hamashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Who's that? That's, that's Pharaoh. That's Esau. All right, Pharaoh, if you're spiritual, all right, if you're spiritual enough to understand that, all right, that, that's that's the accuser of our brethren, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, right, the self-proclaimed white man, as God called him, pale face, right, which accused them before our power day and night, which is what he did, you know, Esau would categorize us, he would put us in a predicament to go off and then blame us and say, look at your people, Lord, well, I don't even think he would say it like that, but he would say, look at, look at what your people are doing, right, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That's how Gad's going to overcome. Gad's not going to overcome by playing flute, flute music, eating fried bread, and drinking Pepsi. All right? That's not how Gad's going to overcome. Gad's going to overcome the elect Gadite, the, the men that were, that were chosen from the foundation of the earth to be delivered. They're going to overcome him, the accuser of our brethren, by the blood of the lamb, the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made, because now we have access to the word, we have access to coming back to the Most High through faith, having our sins forgiven, and we can repent. That's how we're going to overcome, through repentance. All right? Now how's Sakari doing? All right? We ain't going to physically fight nobody. Okay? It said, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved, their, and they loved not their lives unto death. That's right, man. That's how God's going to overcome. All right, in these times, man, we're gonna we're not overcome. We're not gonna overcome by shield, buckler, spear, and sword this time, and arrows. No, this time it's through the blood of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, because he gave the sacrifice way back then, for us to have this word now. All right, us making these lessons, us praying, us fasting, repenting. That's how we're gonna overcome, not just Gad. All right. So with that, call loyim the bonus to my elders and my apostles of great millstone, which are the men that rule well and taught us his truth. Men who taught us his truth. You know, and uh, Lord's will, you were edified, man. All right? Shalom.